Hey guys, it's Tom from Tom Build Stuff, and today I'm going to go over this Linkmaster Twisted Pair Cable Tester from Ideal. You can use it for testing patch cables as well as the structured wiring you have running through your walls. The first thing I want to state is I did receive this tester free so I could write a review on HomeDepot.com. The Linkmaster tester works with unshielded twisted pair as well as shielded twisted pair. This can be a huge time saver if you have a problem with one or more of the cable runs or patch cords. It doesn't just see if pin 1 on one end goes to pin 2 on the other end. It can detect more complicated problems such as split pairs. It can detect a whole host of problems with the pairs in a cable. Later in the video, I'll test a few different cables, some of which have faults in them, to see how well it does. For now, let's go over the faults it can detect. They are open, short, miswire, reverse, and split pair. Split pair detection is one of the things that makes this tester more expensive than the others. First, there's an open fault. This can occur in a number of different ways. There could be a break in one of the wire pairs, or for a patch cable, maybe the wires didn't get pushed into the connector all the way and it didn't get crimped properly. With punched down connectors like your keystone jacks and patch panels, it could mean that they weren't punched down correctly. Another common cause of an open fault is if the wire got nicked while you were stripping the outer jacket and as the cable was moved around, the wire broke. A short occurs when the two wires are somehow touching each other. If you somehow manage to punch two wires down into the same IDC in a keystone jack or a patch panel, that would do it. Another common way is if the insulation of the wires got nicked when stripping the outer jacket and then wound up touching each other, that would do it. So it's really important to use the ripcord when stripping twisted pair. A miswire is when the wire pairs aren't connected in a way that corresponds to one of the wiring standards that the Linkmaster tester recognizes. Those wiring standards are T568A, which you'll see in government installations and it's the standard for residential wiring. T568B, which you'll see in a lot of commercial installations and most patch cables you'll buy. It also recognizes 10 base T and token ring, which are older two pair standards you're not likely to come across too often. One thing to note is it can tell you if a cable is wired for T568A or T568B. It's basically just two pairs that are switched and it can't tell what the jacket colors are. But it can tell you that it's correctly wired to one of those two standards. A reversal fault is when the tip and ring or white striped and solid colored wire of a pair have been reversed on one end. For example, on one end of the cable you have blue followed by white blue on pins 4 and 5 respectively, but on the other end you have white blue in location 4 where blue should be and blue in location 5 where white blue should be. That will cause a reversal fault. The last fault is a split pair. This tester can detect split pairs, and this is why this cable tester is more expensive than some other testers out there. I've seen testers for 8 or 10 bucks that definitely don't detect split pairs, as well as $40 testers that don't. This is a more difficult wiring fault to detect. With a split pair, the wire on pin 4, let's say, on one side, is still connected to pin 4 on the other end, and a simple continuity tester will see that as a good cable. But let's say the wires are wrong. So pin 4 is the blue wire, and the other wire in that pair is a white blue wire, which should be on pin 5. If instead of the blue wire being on pin 4, it was the orange wire and blue-white on pin 5, you'd have a split pair. And then that would correspond to another pair having the split pair, so the white-orange would be with the blue wire. The problem with split pairs is, although the signals will likely get through, it could cause intermittent problems that are hard to trace. It could be a speed issue, it could be losing connection from time to time, and for phones and video, it could be static. The reason the pairs of wires are twisted inside the cable is to reduce interference and crosstalk. To put it somewhat simply, when a current runs through a wire, it induces an electromagnetic field around it. An electromagnetic field can induce a current in a wire. So the electromagnetic field from one wire could induce a small current in a wire that's near it. If all the wires were running in parallel, it could cause noise in other wires in the cable. When each pair is twisted, it reduces that effect. And if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the rate of twist is different for each pair. When pairs are split, you can have problems with interference because the current may run in a way that is not protected from the physical twisting of the cables. This could be a very tricky problem to diagnose. Some quick specs before we go on to the test. 
The minimum length of cable you can test is three feet and the maximum is 600 feet. The maximum flat cable length if you're using a patch cord in a wall jack or patch panel is one and a half feet. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what flat cable length means. If you do, please leave a comment below. I used it with longer patch cables that were regular round twisted pair cables and had no issue. It's made of plastic, but it seems durable and it runs on LR44 button cell batteries. It comes with two pieces, a remote and the main unit. The remote will have T568A and T568B wiring standards printed on it so you can compare it to what you see in your cable. Now let's start the testing. The first cable I'm going to test is a T568A wired patch panel. I made it with stranded Cat 5E cable. There's a 8PHC RJ65 jack on the top of both the tester and the remote. So you just stick one end of the cable in the tester, stick the other end of the cable in the remote, and then just press the button once, and we'll see four LEDs light up. And that indicates all four pairs on this cable tested correctly. This is a commercial made patch cable. Again, I'm just going to insert one end into the tester and the other end into the remote. Well, I actually got that backwards. Press the test button, does a quick scan, and then all four green LEDs stay lit up. I don't have a shielded cable to test, so the other green LED is for the shield. Now the errors have come up. So let's move on to the next cable. I did make two cables that are correctly wired, but they're not wired to a wiring standard that this tester recognizes. So let's see what happens. The first is USOC with eight pairs. This is used for telephone wiring if you have an APHC telephone connection. From pin one to eight, the wires are white brown, white green, white orange, blue, white blue, orange, green, and blue. Okay, so I'll plug one end into the remote and I'll plug the other end into the tester and I'll press the test button. Now, okay, so we see three LEDs blinking and three red LEDs miswire and split pair. Actually, I guess this wasn't wired correctly or got damn. I did test this before making the video and somehow I guess uh, for notice that four or five pin was not lit. That indicates that, indicates that that's open. Uh, so I guess the, the cable got damaged between making the cable and making the video. So anyway, we saw a number of faults here and it didn't really tell us exactly what happened. To get more information, once we find a fault, we long press the test button until all the lights show up and then we let go. Then we'll see that it'll test all the cables, all the pairs together. And we see that one, two, and three and six are miswired. Four just blinked and was blank. And then seven and eight is a split pair with one, two. This next cable is uh, the crossover cable. And I'll put one end into the remote. I'll put the other end into the tester. And I'll press the test button. And we see all four LEDs lit up, but two are blinking and one red wire is one red led is blinking so let's go into debug mode again long hold the test button when all the lights light up let go and we see uh one and two one two and three six are miswired four five is a blue pair that's fine seven eight is five so we got one two miswire three six miswire Okay, so one, two is, and three, six, that's green and orange. So green and orange is reversed, which is what we should be seeing with this crossover cable. One more test. This is a cable I, I made a bunch of errors in. Uh, first I'll connect the remote. Then I'll connect the other end into the tester. And then I'll press the test button. We'll see Three green LEDs are blinking as are two of the red ones. We have reversal and we have a split pair. So let's get more details on what's going on. 
long press the test button till all the LEDs light up, let go. We see one, two is blinking and it says split pair. Three, six is blinking and it says reversal. And four, five is good. Seven, eight is split pair. So one, two is split pair. So one, two and seven, eight are split. Three, six is reversed. Four, five is five. And that corresponds with what I did. And take a close look at the cables. And that corresponds with what I did. If you have a close look, if you could see what's going on here. On one end, I did white green, white brown, white orange, blue, white blue, orange, green, brown. And on the other end, I did white green, white brown, orange, blue, white blue, white orange, green, and brown. So white orange was reversed, and that's what we saw. And the green and brown pairs were split pairs. Okay, now I'm gonna do one more test with this crossover cable. And if you noticed in the other test, I left the jacket long just so that I could damage the individual wires while we're testing. So we have one end in the remote, the other end in the tester, and we'll test them. We'll see that it's miswired because this is the Oops, didn't have it plugged in all the way. So we'll see that this is the crossover cable. Four, five, seven, eight are fine. One, two, three, six are blinking. So, and we only have a miswire. So that's what indicates um, that this is a crossover cable. It's not in like the manual for this product, but that's the, the fault in the cable is actually by design. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I didn't go over the open faults except for that one that was in the green cable, the USOC cable. But if you don't connect the remote to the other end and you press and you press the test button, you'll notice that all the green LEDs, they just flash and they're all blank. That means all the pairs are open and that could mean that the connection wasn't made properly between either the cable and the tester or the cable and the remote or the cable is just completely bad and broken. So we put it one more time and we see we get the results we want. I'm just going to take a, a razor and try to cut off the insulation on, on these wires. Okay, so now I have those two wires touching. Let's do the test again. Okay, so now we see a short light is blinking too. So let's do the debug and get more information. So one, two, and three, six is miswired because this is the crossover cable. And let's see what happens when we go to four, five. Okay, we have the short on four, five. Out of curiosity, I wanna see what happens if I short blue and brown together, if anything comes up. Okay, we do get a short, so let's do the debug. Okay, one, two, miswire, three, six, miswire, three, six, miswire with one, two, four, five, and seven, eight, short and miswire. Okay, so it indicates that pairs four, five, and seven, eight are miswired. That's blue and brown. So now I've shorted white, blue with brown, and let's see what happens. I think we should see the same results. A short, yeah, and the short should be between one, two, and seven, eight, right? Oh, I'm sorry, four, five, and seven, eight. So press and hold for debug. And one, two, and three, six are miswired. So three, six should blink and miswire with one, two. Now four, five, and seven, eight are short and split pair. So, all right, there's a short and that's throwing off the other readings, but it, it knows that there's a short between uh, four, five, and seven, eight, which is great. Now I want to test the structured wiring I have running through my walls. I connected a patch cord I've already tested to the remote and I'm connecting the other end to the keystone jack in this wall plate. Okay, so now I'm at my patch panel and I disconnected the patch cord that went from the patch panel to my network switch down here. And I have the tester with its patch cable here. I'm gonna go back here to the patch panel and in that empty port that's connected to the other end where we put the remote, I'm gonna plug in the tester and I'm gonna press the test button and all four pairs light up green, which means they're good. So we could test 
our in-wall cabling as well as our patch cords. So the tester did everything it claimed it would do. It told us when our cables were good, it identified open faults, shorts, reverse pairs, and even split pairs. So it detects faults that the cheaper testers don't. It's not that expensive either, only about 60 bucks. Even on a small project like my home networking, I wound up running into cabling issues and this tester can save a significant amount of time trying to trace down a problem. If you work with network wiring, there's a good tool to have. Even if you have an expensive cable analyzer that can certify cables, this can save you time by making sure the cable was terminated properly first.